Super Moon, Blood Moon, Super Blood Moon, Strawberry Moon, Wolf Moon, Blue Moon, Harvest Moon, Super Emo Goth Moon. Okay, I got a little bit hyperbolic on the last one, but the names of some of these moons really make you wonder, what do they even mean? You're tuned into Maddie Adams, and today we're going to break down all of these weird moons that I just mentioned, plus more. So next time you see a post online about the next strawberry moon or full hunter moon, you'll know exactly what it means. If you're curious when the next odd moons are happening near you, make sure to check out the Farmer's Almanac. I'll link it in the description. Let's go. Part one, the blood moon. Contrary to popular belief, a blood moon doesn't occur when the moon cuts itself shaving. But unlike some of the other weird moon names that are a bit misleading, this moon does actually turn a reddish hue during the blood moon. This is because it only occurs during a total lunar eclipse when the Earth passes directly between the Sun and our moon. Our atmosphere bends the sunlight, filtering out the blue wavelengths, and it only lets the red and orange light hit the moon. The result is eerie, spooky, ancient, and absolutely beautiful, like something out of a horror movie. In fact, many ancient cultures um, the Aztec, Inca, and Norse, and more saw the blood moon as a bad omen, something that signaled chaos or even the end of the world. There are roughly two to four lunar eclipses per year, but I should note that this doesn't mean that you'll see two to four blood moons per year as you can't see it in all regions and not all lunar eclipses are full lunar eclipses with the full blood moon effect. Part two, the supermoon. All right, fellow nerds, so this one here is pretty simple. A supermoon is big, bright, and beautiful. And it happens when the moon is at or near its perigee, which is its closest point to Earth in its orbit. And if you want to learn more about the moon's orbit around Earth, check out the link in the description or the card right there. Um, when this happens, the moon can appear about 14% larger in our sky and about 30% brighter than usual. So the term supermoon, it was actually coined by an astrologer. Yep, not an astronomer. A guy named Richard Knoll back in 1979. So I guess astrologers have made a few real contributions to astronomy after all. <laughs> Supermoons happen uh, three to four times per year. In my opinion, it's the one that you really want to catch. It's the closest, it's bright, it's stunning, and it can overlap with other moon types like the super blood moon that we saw on January 21st, 2019, which is also called the super blood wolf moon. So this is where it starts to get a little bit confusing, but don't stress out. Just remember the main types for now. Most of the weirder names come from multiple moon types coinciding or from seasons and nature. Those seasonal ones don't have as much of a physical scientific significance, so we'll circle back to them at the end. All right, part three, the blue moon. This one sort of irritates me a little bit actually, and I think the name's a little bit misleading. Unlike the blood moon, the blue moon doesn't actually have any color change. It's simply when there are two full moons in one calendar month. So that's it, just a consequence of our calendars and the fact that we have 30 to 31 month days a lot of times. So the phrase once in a blue moon does make more sense when you put it into context though, as they're only about once every 2.4 years. All right, now on the flip side, a black moon is just the opposite. It's the second new moon in one month or the fourth new moon in a three month season. There are a couple other less common definitions floating around, but these are the two most accepted. A second new moon in a month generally occurs once every 2.7 years. So maybe we should actually change the colloquialism to once in a black moon. All right. So that wraps up all the different weird moons from a physical scientific perspective, meaning that they visually appear differently in our sky. We also touched on the rare blue and black moons. Now let's talk about the ones that are a bit more misleading by their names alone, and these are the seasonal moons. The most recent one I remember hearing about was the strawberry moon, which is just the June full moon, and it's named after the strawberry harvest that occurs in June. So it's not going to appear pink or reddish in the sky unless it's a strawberry blood moon, right? If they happen to coincide. Other seasonal moons include the wolf moon, which is just the first full moon of the year, the sturgeon moon or August full moon, which is named after the sturgeon fish that are abundant in the Great Lakes during this time, or possibly the most famous, the corn moon or the harvest moon, 
which is nearest to the uh, the full moon nearest to the autumnal equinox, which is either going to be in September or October. This signifies the end of the farming season and the start of the harvest season. And there are just tons of these, so I'm not going to name them all, but I'll put some images up on a screen from the Farmer's Almanac for you to pause and look at. So let's just wrap it up here. The most important moons that actually change the visual aesthetic of the moon are the blood moon and the super moon. And yes, you can have a super blood moon. Blood moons are tinted red and super moons are actually super big. Blue moons and black moons are just full moons and new moons respectively that are happening twice in one month. And everything else is just a combination of these or seasonal moons. So that's it. It's not as complicated as you think. There's really only two visual ones, two that have to do with rarity. Everything else has to just do with culture and you know harvest times and nature and things that people put significance on due to the times of these moons. So thanks a lot for listening. You've tuned in to Maddie Adams, and if you've made it this far, make sure to subscribe and share this video with a friend. Peace.